Hey traders, David Frost, my strategic forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Tuesday, April 12, 2022. We are looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. What do we have on the docket today? In last night's video, the title was Failure. Today, we have the makings of the failure. What are those two lines on the screen? Well, that's pretty much the zone that we discussed yesterday, 435.65. I said it was going to be below 436. Inside the number, members had this number early today. They didn't hit it yet, so it is, in my mind, unfinished business, but there's other stuff going on. So I've got a laundry list of notes. Let's start getting through the material because it's going to give you a sense for what's actually happening in the market, what's likely to happen. We're going to talk a little bit about cycles, where the cycles are pointing in terms of time. Time is more important than price. Let's start with the assessment on the daily chart, and then we'll work around the horn from there. The market's getting creamed. They're below all the moving averages. They finished again today below yesterday's low. That's a negative signal. It's not rocket science. I'm just stating a fact. Remember, on the weekly chart, we've got this breakup candle. That's important stuff. There were buyers in there. There will be defense played somewhere along the line. Where is that along the line place? Back to the daily, we're still in the camp that we're going to see another higher low and another rally attempt. Now the question becomes, from where? Is it going to be from 435.65 down to 433 in that neighborhood? It can very well come from in there. Could start tomorrow. But there's something else going on. It's the culmination of two things. So let me explain one of the two things, and then we'll explain the second of the two things. There's a lot of discussion floating around the interwebs, including underneath last night's video and maybe others. It pertains to a potential head and shoulders pattern and whether one exists on the chart or not. So I went and looked at it, and first I blow them off, meaning the head and shoulders pattern, because most of them actually don't work out. So it's kind of like getting something from Joe's Indicator Shop. Most of the time, they just don't work. It's like a coin toss. 50% of the time they work, 40%, 60%. It's not good enough. So I feel the same way about head and shoulders. What happens is everybody starts talking about them, and then all of a sudden, they don't work. But let's have an awareness of what we're talking about, whether it works or doesn't work. We should all be aware. So on the daily chart, it looks like this. It's very difficult to see on the daily chart. really doesn't look like much, but it is a head and shoulders pattern. But if we go down to the hourly chart, you start to see it a little bit better. We can even squeeze the chart closer together so you get a better picture. In fact, we can move the line over to the low here on the hourly chart. It wasn't exact on the daily. Squeeze it together a little more so we can accentuate the actual head and shoulders pattern. So the question is, is this for real? Well, it can be for real. Here is a shoulder. Here is a head, right? And it goes, I guess, all the way down to here. You could have done the same thing down here, and it really would have created another head and shoulders pattern here. So there really is two active patterns in my mind, if we're in the camp of discussing head and shoulders patterns. So either way, even if there's two, what we want to know is, where does the lower one bring a target to? We'll get to that in a moment, so let's just see what happened. So they come below the neckline, this line is the neckline, so they come below the neckline and then they rally back to the neckline and they fail. So technically speaking, this is an active head and shoulders pattern. Again, we can't say it's going to play out the whole way, but it is an awareness type of thing. Folks were bringing it up last night, saw it a couple of times under the video. So I think it's appropriate that we bring it up for discussion. Okay, fair enough. I like my chart back the way it was. What is the target for that head and shoulders pattern? We don't really need to know the shorter one. We need to know the worst case one. Now, we're back on the daily chart, 
42090 is the spot that I've identified. The actual calculation comes up slightly higher, but it's very hard to pinpoint to the penny exactly where price would go. So I had another reason why a spike of 422 would be the ticket. So 422 was actually where the target came as far as my calculation is concerned. So we'll say anywhere from 422 down to 421, give or take. Now again, we don't know that price is going there, but if they start getting in the neighborhood, even getting close, then we know that there's a number down there that has meaning for a reason. Okay, fair enough. Now let's talk about time. Now when we talk about time, we don't talk about price. What does that mean? It means I have no idea where price is going to be in the time frame that I'm about to discuss. Let me give you a case in point. Let's say the market actually reverses back up tomorrow and it goes up for the next several days. Forget about the head and shoulders. It's a failure. They're going higher. There's still going to be a likely turn around mid next week. So if I run some cycle analysis, and this is from the class that I never put together that I haven't taught yet, but if I run some cycle analysis, I came out with two specific things. One for next Tuesday, one for next Thursday, and guess what? We'll just average the distance and say next Wednesday, give or take a day on either side, the market should have a culmination of a move. Whether it's going up or down at the time, the market should turn. We'll just call it mid next week. So guess what? If the market's trading down into mid next week, in the neighborhood, in the 425, in the 422, in that ballpark, for whatever the reason is, it doesn't matter. You have to have the awareness of a cycle matching with a potential important price, and guess what? There you have it. It's something that you have to pay attention to. If it's happening, we're going to be discussing it. But here it is, right now, a week ahead of time, we'll see, maybe. The question will come up, well, can we trade down to 422, 421? No, you can't. You don't know that they're going to get there. You don't know that the head and shoulders pattern is going to play out. But I'll give you this one. Get out your sticky notes. Below 431.50 on candle closes, and that door begins to open for a lot lower stuff. So guess what? Yeah, 431.50 is your bogey for the completion potential completion of the head and shoulders because that would open the door for at least four and a quarter or lower you're in the ballpark so who's going to split hairs down there over a couple of points anyway and you know the routine inside the number members on that day will have a beat on that price by the way little housekeeping this is a short week this friday is good friday the market is closed it's also options expiration so everything will conclude on Thursday of this week, including the options and everything. We say it each month, weird stuff happens during options expiration week. So we had a rally this morning, they collapsed, it was a gap in crap, call it whatever you want. Whether that is weird stuff or not is in the eye of the beholder. Just be aware, it's options expiration week and this week ends on Thursday. We're closed on Friday. Another housekeeping item. Earnings season gets kicked off, I believe, Wednesday morning. Usually it's kicked off with the banks, the big ones, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, JP Morgan. I'm not sure it's only the banks, and I'm not sure it's all the banks. Whatever it is, we'll find out in the morning. If they're moving, they're going to be posted inside the numbers. That's all we need to know. The trades are going to come fast and furious each and every day for the next several weeks. The market's going to get more volatile. What this is, is a package of Mrs. Opportunity knocking. All right, I gave you more than a bread box. Over to inside the numbers. It's turnaround Tuesday. You could make a case we had a turnaround. They turned around up in the morning and down in the afternoon. We should expect some big swings in both directions today. We had that. If they're bouncing, 440 is important, but 441 was more important. And then you'll find out an even more important number later. They had a nice rally in the pre-market, so they blew through all this stuff. They released some economic data at 8.30. It was the perfect excuse 
to goose the tape. They sucked in the long side traders, the buy the dip, Johnny come latelys. It was the FOMO crowd, fear of missing out. And here you go, we always give both sides early in the morning and all day when needed. And here you have 435.65. So that now is the unfinished business. They didn't get there today. They came close. They should complete that task. There you have the 830 economic numbers hit. Goose operation begins. We're moving along, see what else we have. And what we had was needing the numbers on the other side. So when the market wasn't rallying in the pre-market, who needed numbers all the way up here? But now we did. 442.80 is a big spot. After that, 444. And then yesterday's high at 445. You'll see 444 come up many, many times. 444 was a very, very key number. Just to get the visual, there's your 444. 445 they hit. We talked about that. And then you'll see in the notes, we're going to get there in a moment, not being able to sustain 444 price above. 444 was the no dice scenario for the bulls. It was where the bull case falls apart. That's what you're going to see in the notes. So let's scroll up a little bit. Again, pause the video, read the notes, go back to the chart to double check the work. Let's see what else we have as the day really begins to get underway. Early in the morning, as they were rallying, what it looked like was they went down to test that former breakout area of 441 that we discussed a few times, and now they're bouncing off of it, closing down there yesterday to give the impression that they're going lower. However, while they bounced off of it, they really gave up the ghost and they had a gap in crap instead. So either way, we have a beat on the numbers. Let's see what happens once the day gets kicked off. 935, 444 is the most magnetic price up north. At some point, barring a failure, they should be at 444. That was 935. Here's the candle ending 935. In the next candle, you find them where? Right up at a high of 444.02, and they kept going. So, we're moving along. Remember, 445 is yesterday's high. And right away, when they first got up there, they had a quick reaction at 444. It tells us it's important as we thought. Above 444 is the ticket to the bull case. Below 444 is not. You'll see that later. 444 is our pivot. Again, pause the video, read the notes, go back to the chart to double check the work. 954, this is while they're still rallying. There will be a morning high and a pullback operation at some point. They won't just keep going. 445.50 is the hourly chart, 20 period moving average. They've stopped there for the time being. It's not the most important number on the board, but makes sense from a visual perspective. Here's the hourly chart. There's your moving average. Little did we know that was, in fact, high of day. You have to look at a whole plethora of different things. So by 10.15, here's the way it works. Can a trader be long at 4.44 or as long as they stay above on candle closes? Yes, they should go higher later after eating some time off the clock, as long as they stay above 4.44. However, trading below takes that off the table. That's it. We're moving along. 10.30. Bulls are no longer in control of the tape below 4.44. It's all about staying above 4.44. That says about, should say above. I'm writing fast. I can't see all the mistakes. And we're moving along. 10.51. Below 4.44 is where the bulls lose control of the tape. You get the point. We're moving along. And then what you'll see is Getting below a certain number opens a door for another number, and that's pretty much what happened all day long. There were minimal bounces along the way, and they basically killed the tape all day. What about stocks on the move? We had a little bit of a laundry list on the board today. We had five possibilities. Three are off the board. They didn't hit their entry objectives. However, two did. So we'll take a look at the chart of AstraZeneca and CarMax, KMX, AZN. First one. CarMax, 97.15 was put on the board bright and early, right around zero dark 30. You can see what happened. They gave you a number of rocket rides away from that number. Jordan got that in the room. A lot of people in the live room got this trade and more than the minimum required base hit. 
way more. Think about it. The minimum required base hit was a dollar to begin with, almost a dollar. Then you can see what happened later as the market was getting killed. They still stopped at these numbers and bounced around in between these numbers before killing them into the close, but the trade is long gone by then. It's over. How about AZN? How about easy as pie? We like these. 68.15 put on the board, fluttered around for a while, finally came into the number. Once they did, spiked it by a few pennies, marched back up in the other direction, providing the minimum required base hit, and then some. Two trades in the books. Base hits put you in the Hall of Fame. What's going on in Camp IWM? Well, we're in that it's all the same market scenario. So you wake up tomorrow, you're getting a tremendous rally, everything's going to be getting a rally. You wake up tomorrow and everything's getting killed, you're likely going to find everything getting killed. However, we have to take notice. The IWM was still up today. It was up a whole lot more and got killed with everything else. But look at this in relation to and as compared to the S&P 500. It's my favorite market leading indicator. You have to put this on a sticky note. You have no choice. They're still trying to work on that higher low scenario. Doesn't mean they won't come lower, but they haven't yet. They're working on it. We have to look at things from a multitude of perspectives. And when you look at the weekly chart, you have to say it looks terrible. Again, the last stand is Irene. The low is 187.92. Start closing below that low, certainly weekly below that low, and a new game has started for lower prices. You could pretty much count on or make an appointment with about 175. What about the folks down at the transportation department? Same routine. We had this yesterday. We had it again today. So my two favorite market leading indicators were up today in a down tape. It's interesting. You have to put it on a sticky note. It's a puzzle piece. It's on the table. Weird stuff happens during options expiration. I can't unknow that information. What about the Q people, the folks out in Silicon Valley annexed over in Austin, Texas? Guess what? They didn't hit the number today. I guess we put this on the board yesterday, 337.75. I don't really remember when I put it on the board, but guess what? The low today was 338.04. So now we have some more unfinished business. If the whole thing with the head and shoulders from the SPY is going to play out, where are the Qs going to go? Well, they're going to go to at least three and a quarter. Below 334 is trouble. And I'm going to take that back a little bit. Maybe 331, 332, they would find some semblance of support, but they could go as low as three and a quarter, even 322. That's during a woodshed type market, you know, where they take them out to the woodshed, shoot them three times, leave them for dead. We had a divergence yesterday with the financials, but not today. Today, they were down 1%. The SPY was not down 1%. It was down a lot less than 1%. So we have some stuff going on all over the place. 36, 67, 65, 70, 71, 58, something in this neighborhood is an important spot for the XLF. But realize that they kind of came up short and bounced away, so therefore, it may not be the best place in the world for a long trade. A better trade would be filling this gap down at 36. Just saying. Smash Mouth? Smash Mouth is teetering. Here's a weekly chart. Look where they're teetering. Here's a breakup candle low, 237.32. This 100 period moving average really isn't going to be that big of a deal, maybe for a short period of time, but having come up close and bouncing away the confidence level that the 100 period moving average is really good support is not the same as it once was. Now, there's one thing that we have to be aware of. We know about Irene numbers, and I don't want anybody to get the impression that just because they get below a certain place, they immediately collapse. That doesn't necessarily happen. It can happen. It does happen. It doesn't have to happen. So let's talk about an alternate scenario. We just talked about the 100 period moving average on the weekly chart and how it's not really the same type of support that it once was. But what about a fake out operation? What happens if they start to get below the 100 period moving average? They're below some important stuff. So here's the point. Where's that number or maybe that zone? where it looks like they're going to collapse, 
They get below the 100 period moving average, and then all of a sudden they hit something and reverse anyway. Not to say they're going to reverse for a long time, but at least it's the beginning of a fake out operation. Where would that number be in Smash Mouth? I would get out a sticky note for this one as well. It's a zone, and you can't read it because it's close together. It's 230.90 down to 228.15. Now, I'm not saying they have to stop there. I'm saying if it was going to be one of those fake out operations and they started to break down, that would be the spot that they would A, go to, and B, they can turn around at that spot. I'm not saying they will, just be aware of that spot. And if you see some reversals start to take place there, you can raise an eyebrow and you'll know some of the information. Have I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you? Without you, these videos are not possible. That is true and accurate information. We're pulling the ripcord here today. I'm David Frost, my strategic forecast. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.